Hey y'all, hey, it's Asia Lachelle here with The Fluffy Hustle. If you're interested in learning how to create a beautiful banner like the one you see right here, then go ahead and stay tuned. going to be recreating this fly flyer i'm going to be walking step by step through my process this may be longer but y'all are literally getting a free tutorial where i normally charge for this so stay tuned sis <laughs> all right so look so i've created a duplicate page here the first thing i did was i clicked on photos because we need to get this background so what i typed the background is here but i'm going to show you what i did i typed in christmas background Okay, and the background that I use was here. And all you gotta do is drag it and drop it. That's it, quick like that. Boom, we have our background. The next thing I did is that I took an element. I went to elements and I put, I placed a um, a square in, in the shapes. I placed the square right here. Okay, I made that square white and then I changed the dimensions of it and I brought it up to where these little grid lines are right here. I, I moved it all the way out. Boom. 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 Okay, now I changed the, um, the transparency and I'm gonna get that information. I had the transparency of this at 59. So I'm gonna go in here, click on it, click on transparency. You can either drag it or you can type it in if you know the number. Okay, so boom, I got the transparency here. Now the reason why I did this transparency is a lot of times when you try to place uh, pictures or you try to place text on top of a busy background that's colorful, sometimes it's hard to do, especially if some of the font colors that you wanna use are the same color or in the same color range as the background, right? So because I love the colors in this background, the reds, the whites, the golds, the silvers, all of that, I'm gonna be bringing that into the design. But if I try to place that on top, right on top of it, some of the things won't look as good. So I'm just going to give you an example. So if I were to just get rid of this right now, do you see how that red kind of disappears in here? This kind of blends into that. Like it doesn't pop out as much. Okay. So once adding that in, you can still see the background, but there's something in between it. So it creates more of a contrast. So that's the reason why I do that. So now that I have that there, I'm going to lock this in place. The thing about Canva is it, once you get something in place and you know for sure you want it to be there, I would suggest that you lock it because once you start adding more and more elements in, it can get to where you're accidentally selecting the wrong thing and you move the wrong thing. It gets to be a lot. So my suggestion would absolutely be to, once you get something in place, go ahead and lock it in. All right, so the next thing we are going to work with are our photos of the models. Now, all you have to do is, if you have pictures that you want to use, you need to just upload them into Canva. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna select this photo and this photo to use. All right, now that I have them selected, I'm gonna move them here. And these are literally stock photos from my vendor. Um, and if you are interested in either one of these dresses or high quality, plus size products um, and clothes, then um, check out my plus size vendors list. I'll have that linked below. Um, you're gonna go to effects, and you're gonna click on background remover. The background, remo the background remover on Canva is amazing. It saves so much time and it elevates your designs. Sometimes the app tweaks a little bit. Okay, there we go. 
So now we have the two pictures um, cropped out. We want to put them in place now. So I'm going to make them larger. And if I look at the top picture, I had it like that. I'm trying to replicate it, but it doesn't have to be exact. Okay, so I know I had it like this, and I had it like that. Okay, and so I'm going to size this one to match it. So I'm going to bring it up to the same level, and then I'm going to bring this down. And I'm going to just eyeball it and bring this in. I know I had them more like that. Yes. Okay, now that I have them in place, I have shadows behind them. This is a this is a tip that I literally don't think anybody else has shown on YouTube about how to create shadows on Canva. So let me show you. So you want to make copies. Command C and then Command V to make a copy in a Mac and it's Control C and Control V on a, a PC. Okay, boom. Let's move these to the side. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is this. I'm going to go over to adjust, okay? And I'm gonna take the brightness of this down to negative 100, take the contrast up to 100, the saturation down to negative 100. Now you see it's just a black blob, right? I'm gonna blur it to 40%. Here we go. And I'm gonna change the transparency to 89. You can change your transparency and blur it as little or as much as you'd like. That's totally up to you. Now that I have that done, I'm gonna lock it. I'm gonna to go to the next photo and I'm gonna do the same thing. So adjust, brightness down, contrast up, brightness down, blur to 40, transparency is 89. Okay, now that I have that one done, lock it into place. Next, grab this model, bring her over here. I believe in the photo I kind of had it like this and brought her over here and had her like that and I'm going to change her position because she was backwards behind this one mm. bring that out a little okay boom and then I'm going to lock her into place and I'm going to lock her into place okay we're done with them or that part. Next, we're gonna move on to text. So, click on text. Now, you can choose to play around and just like add your text and type it in however you want to. If you're not good with determining like what fonts work well together or look good together, like Canva's pretty good because they give you font combinations over here, things that you can put together that kind of give off a vibe that you like or whatever, you can use that as a base. And that's what I did. I used this one as a base okay and so i didn't care for i didn't want to use this font playlist script this particular font is a font that a lot a lot a lot of people use <laughs> a lot of people use including myself and so um when you come up with designs and because i put out so much content like i just i can't keep using the same font so i used daydream i changed it to daydream i felt like daydream felt more like um a holiday font to me so the text was holiday dress and what i want to do is you can see like this group of fonts they're grouped together so i need to ungroup them and the reason why i need to ungroup them is because you saw when i typed out holiday dress it dropped down like dress dropped down I need to open this up so that it could be on the same line. And then what I did was you can keep this level, like I made it straight. You can keep it at a diagonal. I think for this example, I'll leave it at a, di I'm gonna leave it at a diagonal, but um, have the font at 152. So I'll change this one to 152 as well. And then I'm gonna drag that out. Now, the thing about Canva is that it's gotten better 
as far as like what you can do with the fonts because now you can actually put a shadow on on font that's one of the things inside of canva that you can put a shadow on is your text um not your elements or anything like that but your text you can put shadows on so um i did put a shadow on this and i did change the blur i think i put the blur at like let me say it was uh, 40 let's try a blur of 40. i think that's 20. yeah i like the 20 blur um so the blur is good here at that but i feel like and then i changed it to red but i felt like it wasn't enough enough depth so what i did was i made a copy of it i duplicated it okay and then i changed the color up here to that red now where did i get this red from the cool thing that canva does when you look at this it creates color palettes based on the colors that are in your photo so it took colors out of my background colors from uh, this photo of this this dress in this photo of just this dress and it created a palette for me so I chose that red because it would tie in with the reds that's already in the picture right so that's the cool thing about that so then what I did was I put this on top of this and I offset it so it gave it even more depth it, it lifted it up off of this the page even more okay so now i have sale and i felt like because holiday dress was so big that sale needed to be you know a little bit larger so the font here is 128 but one of the things i did is an effect or not an effect but i changed the letter spacing to 278 so what i did here i left it at 128 but i went into the letter spacing and changed it to 278 and you see here it just widened it a little bit so it wasn't so drastic between this and this as far as the width okay so now that we have this and i wanted this sail to be right here at the center and then i'm going to bring down holiday a little bit as well and here and offset it a little bit and then the last thing i need to do is shop now shop now and this particular font i have it at 101 with the drop shadow so let's do the same thing 101 okay Y'all see that? Y'all see why I say <laughs> to lock stuff in place once you have it where you want it to be? Because it sometimes you can accidentally click the wrong thing and then you start moving stuff that you don't want to move. All right, so here we go. So here we go. And I'm going to make sure I offset that again. There. Now we have shop now. We're going to change the color on this to that red again and i'm going to go in effects and i'm going to add a drop shadow i don't like that red shadow i'm going to change the shadow to black and then here we go so we have that so now we have the the basics like if you wanted to leave this like this you could right you could it looks okay but the thing with me and the thing i like to do with design is i like to layer design meaning there's more than just one thing going on you can add different elements so i wanted to bring some silvers into the the um the front and so i want to you see how i have that silver behind shop now this is what i'm going to do so i went to photos and i literally typed in silver foil and then i clicked on this foil here and so actually before i do this let me lock this stuff in lock lock and lock all right so now that we have the foil here i'm going to put this on top of this i'm going to change the dimensions and drag it 
to the end here and here you guys excuse my dog if you heard her roofing she's hearing people our neighbors who are super loud talking outside now you see what I just did I double clicked and you can decide like where you want the silver to be and I want the lighter parts of the silver to show that look more reflective so here we go and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to select it again and change the position and move it backward until it is behind everything that I want it to be behind all right and so you are all set there so now we have another layer so we're almost done we have two more little finishing touches to add um, to this photo so now that I have this part and this part done like hold on see we have so many layers of stuff it's hard to get to other layers but anyway I'm gonna leave that where it is so the next thing I want to do is I want to add these little red glitters on here so I'm gonna go back to elements and I'm going to go to something called a f the frames and in the frames the frames are cool because you can like drop any kind of picture into them and they'll drop right in and so with this frame I chose it was it looked like a little swoosh it was a little swoosh where is the swoosh <laughs> Uh, there's some swooshes here. Ah, here it is. Passed it up. So this is the swoosh. Okay. And then I went to photos and I typed in red glitter. Okay. And I chose this one. So there is my glitter. And I turned it on an angle. And I sized it down okay and I brought it down here and I like put it on a on this corner so that's how I had it positioned so I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller so you can see some of it of the little swoosh okay so I put that there It was something like that, y'all. You put your swooshes where you want to put your swooshes. Okay, so I'm, I made a copy of it. And I'm going to do another swoosh. I had one up here. Behind the model. Okay. So I had it like this, kind of. Mm, more like that. And then I moved the position. Moved it backwards. And now I have the glitter behind her. Oh, it was slightly bigger. Okay. Oops. Undo. Okay. So here we go. So we have that. We have our little swooshes. And I think I even might do... A larger swoosh up in here make it a little bigger or something like that maybe change the angle of it yeah okay I'll add that in there so I like that anyway so now we're literally we're good with that we can lock these in place lock 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 and then the last thing I did to give it some um, movement is I went back into elements and I think the keyword I used was sparkles. And I went in here to the filter and I only wanted the animated ones. Okay, and then I went in here and I search through 
the sparkles that I liked and I feel like maybe I did this one I can't remember now and like this one oh this one has diamonds falling that's bomby hold on let's see. I'm, I'm actually changed this one I like this one a little better so we got fallen diamonds um So you got fallen diamonds you could do something like this like you could do so much with like the stuff here in canva but this kind of big for that and it's not really um holiday -y. so i just want to do regular little sparkles and i had seen them already where i had used them before so i use this one these okay and I just sized them down and I put one down here okay made a copy and brought one up here that's it so that was the design now one of the things I can show you too is the um animation so you can animate your slide so you can click on animate and it can do different there you go look at that you can block it in fade stuff in pan and you could do this like you can use this to create instagram stories instagram posts you can use this for your covers like there's so much you can do with this um i love that pop that's so cute to me anyway and you have neon or flashes in so there's so much you can do but there you go that is how you can simply create a banner for your website using canva using only things inside of canva you don't have to go buy glitter packs you don't have to buy foil packs there's animations in here you can get the shadow effect you can do so much some of the stuff that you really love like people really love to see so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this this is day four of hustlemas <laughs> i hope you guys are enjoying the content and i will catch you in the next video